So my name's Kat McLennan and I'm a visual merchandising consultant. So I work with lots of different brands from tiny um, independents to big brands but helping them with what their stores look like. So um, that can be anything from um, the store design, um, the fixture layout, um, I help people with their curation of product stories, visual merchandising and um, windows which is um, obviously quite a fun, fun part of the job and anything to do with the look and feel of, um, of retail. So obviously we know that it's been a really you know, tough time for physical retail over the last 18 months but um, I am just so super positive about retail and especially local shops, independent shops and big brands if they can make their stores feel um, more local and sort of give more autonomy to their store teams to um, make a difference because I really think that everyone's missed that face-to-face -face, um, shopping experience and um, there's a real opportunity to change things but to make a real difference. I don't think we can go back to how we were before and, and I think that's the, that is the huge opportunity. I keep hearing people go, oh, we're going to get back to normal, we're going to go back to how we did it before, but I really think that we've got to take the key learnings that have been good about the last 18 months, what we've learned, and then um, maximise what we've got in store. And so the big part for me is um, about the merging of... Um, the physical store with an online online retailing because we've done so much work over the last 18 months to um, develop any online offer and everyone's got very used to shopping um, you know through their computer but as I said they've really missed that physical retail experience but the online stuff is definitely not going away but there is a way that we can merge the two together and so that they can help each other and really drive sales for you from from both sides really so I'm going to take you through um, some um, key points that I think are really useful to think about when you think about your website and you think about your physical store and how they can work together so a seamless customer journey through all your available channels is like so important. Each channel has got its own unique features and benefits um, which should be exploited. But it's really critical that there's a synergy across all of the touch points so that you can showcase your brand, your product and your marketing stories. Um, customers need to feel the same warm feeling about things however however they shop with you. And they might well um, look online and then come into your store or come into the store and not make a purchase but then go home and buy um, from, your, from your website. So there is an opportunity for each channel to support each other. So window displays can drive traffic to your online shop through um, things like using a QR code in um, your window display which is a great way of, of really making um, proper window shopping come to life. So if you were closed or you know, it was late at night or the customer just didn't have time to go into the store, if they click on the QR code in the window, they can be taken to either to your website or to the exact product that's in the window and make a sale there and then. So I think that's a huge opportunity that everybody should be, um, should be using. Um, and also, um, it works the other way as well. So if um, you offer click and collect on your website, obviously someone's going to come into your physical store to pick up their purchase. And that's a huge opportunity and chance to connect with your customer, to have a chat with them. Um, and also they may well buy something else once they come into your store and see how great it looks and you're offering them a different experience. Um, and also not to be underestimated, and I've listened to a few of the other talks this morning, um, is the amount of data that you gather from an online sale. So all that information about who your customer is, what they're actually buying, what things they're buying together, um, and how long they spend on your website, all of that data is really useful, useful for you to use um, when building a strategy for your um, physical store as well. So you can take all that 
information and, 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 and use, use them of that in an informed way. Um, so I think, yeah, it's really useful to connect all the many tools and techniques that are transferable from bricks and mortar to your online shop. Um, and the first one is to think of your window um, and your home page as exactly the same, um, the same thing. So windows um, are obviously a really important visual statement, um, encouraging customers to enter your store. Um, you can show your promotions um, and any new product that, uh, that's happening. But your home page does exactly, exactly the same thing. So that needs to grab um, the customer's attention and get them to click further into the website as if they were stepping into your store um, and to discover you know, more. And like your windows, they should be refreshed really frequently. Um, they can be continually updated and should be in line with each other. So especially for big events, you know, for Christmas, whatever your Christmas window is, can you get that same look and feel on your home page as well, whether that's through the product or a colour or graphics, um, to make sure that it all aligns and, and makes a seamless um, journey for your customer. I've got a couple of um, examples to show you of this. And now these, are, these are big brands that I've chosen, but I, feel, I think it's really useful to look at them and you can see what you can learn from them. So this is John Lewis and their um, Any Day range. Um, and the picture on the right is um, the in-store and window um, display, which you know, has got a really strong graphic message and colour and the product. And then they have absolutely matched it on their home page as well. So if you were in store and then you saw the home page, you'd really connect it up and understand what they were, what they were talking about. And Selfridges um, obviously always do things like this really well. So their corner shop um, on Oxford Street, which is a window and a retail space, um, they have really great marketing stories in there, which they then transfer onto the website as well. So this was um, Pangaya, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a really fascinating brand to look at anyway. But the shop and the window looked fantastic, but all the information and the background behind it was on the website, so it really did um, link together. The second um, thing to think about is that all your visual merchandising and your store layout is exactly the same as the site navigation and any curated stories that you show um, on your website. So creating a good customer journey is critical in store. The more product your customer sees, the more they will buy. So this is achieved by you know, having really clear walkways so people can move around the space, great focal points to catch people's attention, um, and um, really good VM techniques so that it makes the product look exciting. And that can be done by um, a few different ways. And there's two main ways of um, VM that, that we tend to use. And so this is like a blocked version of VM. So all of the same product together so that your customer knows, um, can see as a signpost. So if they're coming for a cushion, they know you do cushions and you've got all the cushions together. They can see the whole lot all together in one place. And the same with the, um, the picture here of bags, all the bags together, you can see them all in one place. But on top of that, you also need curated, coordinated collections of product. So to show your customer how the product will look like in their own life, so how does it go together with other categories in your store? So to create lifestyle sets, whether that's a, yeah, a table setting, a room set, or if it's fashion, an outfit that's got that bag and that scarf from that blocked area, um, it's pulled together to show them what an outfit could look like. And then they may well buy the whole outfit, hopefully, or the whole table setting, or things that they hadn't even thought of buying because you've shown it. But it's really important to have those two different techniques um, in, in your store. And online, this is exactly, exactly the same. And often websites um, tend to do this really well, and so it's a big lear learning we can take from websites. Um, I think I've got sort of 
yeah, this is just sort of a Bowdoin example. So um, to have these drop-down menus that have everything in the same category. So if you're looking for a dress, all the dresses are there all together when you click on it. But on top of that, they've got some edited collections as well. So they can show the product in outfits or in um, occasions. So it's exactly what you would do in store as well to have those blocked areas and curated areas. So you could merge the two and have the same story in both channels, um, which will really strengthen, strengthen your brand. Now, the next one is to think of um, display in your shop um, as your product um, and the styling on your website. Um, and this is about making sure that um, customers can see all the features and benefits of all the different items that you've got. So they've got really clear message um, about, what you're, about what you're selling. So in a store, we can pull things together in groups. I'm going to do a little demonstration <laughs> in a minute and show you some groupings. Um, and online, your imagery is so important for this. Um, images need to be uniform in style and to consider the scale of the product so that customers can understand how big something is, what it looks like next to other items in its family, um, as well as showing it in a lifestyle um, environment. I think I've got some pictures here. Yeah, so that, this is heels. Um, so this one particular vase, um, the range of photography that they use is to show it on its own, to show it with another vase from its family so you can see what it looks like next to its, um, you know, its, its, its other, other pieces. Then in a group with other objects so you can understand the scale and in a pure sort of lifestyle um, grouping so that customers can see how it might fit into their home um, and other items that, that, may, that may go with it. So on a website you need all of that information and in store you need all of that information um, as well. So um, I was going to just have a little demo here of some products just to show you how to pull these things together and what the different groupings could actually, um, could actually be. So, <laughs> um, I've got a collection of products here that's from um, exhibitors in the, in the show. So, I'm going to do three little um, groupings here just to um, show some display techniques, but also how they work all together from a colour a color perspective. So um, when you're grouping things, whether that's in-store or for online photography, what's really important is that um, you think about the style of um, display that you want to show. So it might be um, a triangle display, I don't know if everyone knows about, about that, um, to make sure that everything's grouped um, with a tall thing at the top and then smaller items coming down the, um, down the outside. Because what happens then is that your eye is drawn to the top item, which is, um, can be the most important or um, just the most interesting item, and then your eye then moves down all the other parts of the display. So here I've got some um, candles, and this is the packaging from the candles, so it's quite nice to show that. If I put one up here, it just gives a bit of height, and one here, and here, and you can see we're already starting to build that tri an asymmetrical triangle shape. And then the lid of the candle, if I put it here, <laughs> that elongates the, um, the triangle even more. So you could, if you were going to just show the product on its own, have that. But then if you wanted to make more of a lifestyle feel, to add some other elements in. So I've got these really cute little cactuses that I'm going to put down here. And also... Um, Books are a really great prop to use to give a bit of height to, to displays and you can use them to put items on. So I'm going to do that. And one more. So I might just put in there. Like that. So you can see, 
again, I've got like a triangle display going on here and here. And it's a whole sort of group of products that, um, when I get the other things in, you'll see that it links with a color, a color story and a lifestyle story. So it, at home, you might have the candle and then you think, well, I might like this as well because it goes, goes together. We have some jewelry now. So again, what I'm going to do is start with the highest item here. And then add in smaller things to, again, create this sort of triangle feel. And what's quite nice with jewellery, often people ask me how to display jewellery. And I think it, what's great is that you can have off-the-shelf props that you can buy to display things on. But it's quite fun and nice to use unusual other items, whether that's bowls or mirrors, sometimes look really nice to put jewellery on. And then I'm just going to add this one here. So we're showing all three colours of these beautiful necklaces. But again, your eye is drawn to here and then down to this bit and this bit. Um, so it's creating that sort of triangular feel. Whoops. And then finally, sometimes it's quite nice to add something just as a pure prop that you're not selling, whether it's, um, I don't know, some flowers or fruit or something that's um, not for sale, but it just pulls everything together. So I picked these in my garden this morning, <laughs> and just luckily they really go with the product. So again, it all links together. We're linking back these colours to this book over here, but we've created our own triangular display up here. And then finally, I've got some um, great pieces of china here. So what's quite interesting about this is um, these plinths are great. And if you were going to show it either in store or take some photography for your website, you could just take each item individually on the, on the background like this, just so they can see all the different elements, all the different size bowls. But then when you came to group it and display, we can just stack them up inside each other so that it just looks more interesting and people really might want to come and touch it and pick it up and see, see what all the different items are. And you can see the whole collection. And then I'm just going to add some more of these <laughs> just to link it all together. But you could, with this one, would be great if you had, you know, some glasses or a napkin as well that you could put in to create a real sort of table, table setting. Um, so that's three different groupings, but also they all do link together through colour, which is a really good way of making a cohesive display. Um, and they tell, but they still tell three separate stories. So you could have this in a window, might look quite good, or in the front of a store as you come in um, as a table display so customers can see everything um, all together that goes together. So that's the display part. And then the final um, really important thing to consider when um, this thinking about these techniques from physical and online is your face-to-face -face customer service versus the virtual customer service that comes through and um, comes through your website. So, obviously, the massive advantage of being in store is that you get to um, meet your customer face to face. You can build that relationship. Um, you can understand what they're liking. Um, and they can pick things up and touch it. So the, the really good thing about getting people in store is to have that, have that experience. Um, but virtual customer service is equally um, as important. Um, so online, the type of customer service that people are absolutely expecting um, and that you need to offer is full availability if something's on the website they need to be able to buy it and there needs to be the sizes or the range of products um, on there 
clear product information and that is down to the photography again a bit like we you know we spoke all the different ways that you're going to photograph the product so that people can see it and understand it obviously easy returns and quick delivery is something that everybody um, everybody wants nowadays um, and also the returns part of things People could bring it back to the store and again you've got an opportunity to sell them something else and find, or find out why they weren't happy with the product. Um, online you've got the opportunity to build your community through things like newsletters, virtual shop tours which are absolutely fantastic or virtual styling sessions, all really great things um, that you can do to interact with them um, with customers. Um, and also um, chat boxes um, are a really useful thing if it's done in a quite an authentic way and that's the key thing that it has to be feel very real and be really authentic um, online but there's lots you can do to build your community that way but also in store um, this face-to-face -face relationship building is um, like super important and the exciting part of having physical retail your passionate and knowledgeable sales team, um, they are your brand ambassadors and um, should be recruited on you know, their enthusiasm for what you're selling and that they're fully trained and know, know what they're selling and they can pass that information onto, onto your customer. The click and collect thing I think is really um, quite important because that really does merge both things together and gets people back into the physical space. And also, um, you know, now we can start to do those face-to-face -face workshops and, um, you know, get-togethers with everybody and product launches and parties or things in store. Um, and that's something that you can't replicate online. Um, and, and so it should be there so that you can build, build that community. Because retail has got to work so much harder now and be much, much more of an experience to encourage people to come out. There's got to be a reason for them coming into your store. And so all these things that you're doing will bring people um, into, into the retail space. So my key takeaways from this are to really think about what these synergies are so that your window and your homepage are the same thing. Store layout is the same as your site navigation so it needs to be really clear visual merchandising in store is your curated stories online and you should have all of that information there for customers display as we've done here is your product photography and styling so anything that you test out in store you could translate into your website and to think about the face-to-face -face customer service um, along with your virtual service as well and how they can come together so that you can offer a you know, 360 um, view to, um, to your customers. And finally, yeah, linking the physical and digital will build your community and then it will increase and drive sales. So um, you really have to think about both of those things and about how they work together. Um, yeah, and that's... That's everything from me, but if anyone's got any questions, please do come up and um, have a chat, um, and I hope you found it, found it useful. Thank you.